Let's stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel for today on the second last Sunday of the church here is recorded in Matthew 25, beginning at verse 14. And Jesus said, It will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted to them his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, each according to his ability. And then he went away. He who had received the five talents went at once and traded with them, and he made five talents more. So also he who had two talents made two talents more. But he who had received the one talent went and dug in the ground and hid his master's money. Now after a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. And he who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five talents more, saying, Master, you delivered to me five talents. Here, I have made five talents more. And his master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. And he also, who had the two talents, came forward saying, Master, you, you delivered to me two talents. Here I have made two talents more. And his master said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. And he also who had received the one talent came forward saying, Master, I know that you are a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you scattered no seeds. So I was afraid. And I went and I hid your talent in the ground. Here. Here is what is yours. But his master answered him, You wicked and slothful servant, you knew that I reap where I had not sowed and gather where I scattered no seed. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and at my coming I should have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to one, the one who has the ten talents. For everyone who has will be given, and he will have an abundance. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And cast the worthless servant into the outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the gospel of our Lord. Grace be unto you in peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. There was a Friday night years ago when Marilyn and I had dinner and spent a delightful evening with Robert and Sharon Marshall in their new home. After supper, we turned off all the lights in the house. We each lit a candle, and we walked through the house into each room, praying and asking God to bless each hallway and each room. And it was amazing how much strength and power that activity brought to our lives. What a blessed time that was. Christ, the light of the world, 
punctuated the darkness with warmth, care, and hope. That's what Jesus does for each of us. In the midst of darkness, in the midst of despair, in the time of turmoil, Christ is there to bring light and life and hope. If things are really going bad for you and everything seems very dark and foreboding, I'm going to encourage you to turn off all the lights in your house and light one candle, a Christ candle, and pray. And you will see how Jesus comes to light your darkness, and you will see how he comes to give you his strength, and you will feel the warmth and the power of his presence. The Son of Righteousness shall rise with healing for his people, and you will be touched and you will be blessed. And that's God's promise to each of us in his precious word. Jesus said to his disciples 2,000 years ago that nation will rise against nation, kingdom will rise against kingdom. There will be earthquakes and famines and terror and desolation all around. Great distress upon the earth and wrath and fear among all peoples. It'll be bad. But you, you, even in the midst of all this turmoil, you can straighten up when all these things happen, and you can lift up your heads and you can rejoice. Why? Because Jesus, your redemption, is drawing near. Jesus comes to give life to his people, to all those who believe and trust in what he has done. The circumstances of life can be very terrible, but the Lord of life is gracious and good. And we've got to realize that we're not connected, really, to circumstances. We are connected to Jesus. We are connected to Jesus, the Lord of life. That's our connection. And the Son of Righteousness shall arise. And we will be lifted up by grace even in the midst of the turmoil. There's an old children's knock-knock joke that goes like this. One child asks another, will you forget me in an hour? No. Will you forget me in a day? No. Will you forget me in a month? Oh, no. Knock, knock. I thought you said you wouldn't forget me. Well, that's the joke, but it is no joke because God will never forget us regardless of who we are, what we do. If we are faithless, he will remain faithful for he cannot disown himself. The one who loves you the most will always be there to love you and care for you. And the only thing I guess we could say that Jesus cannot do is he cannot love you more than he already loves you. Sometimes we don't see Jesus at work. We don't see what he's doing for us. There's a teaching story about a man who was the lone survivor of a shipwreck, 
and he was washed up on a small inhabited island. And he prayed to God to rescue him, to send some rescuers. And every day he scanned the horizon and watched and waited, but, but nobody ever came. One day, he built a small hut for himself, and he put all of his possessions into that hut. And that was his, his place for the next weeks and months and even years. And one day he returned from his hut foraging for food and he found the hut with all his possessions in flames. Smoke was billowing up and pouring into the sky and he was grief stricken. He was angry, angry with God. Why would you do this to me, God? I, I prayed for that you would send some rescuers and instead my hut's burning down, everything I have is gone. What's going on, God? Where are you, God? Why don't you hear my prayers? Why don't you help me? Well, of course, early the next day, a ship drew up to the island and rescued him. How did you know? I was here, he asked the crew. Huh, we saw your smoke signal, they said. <laughs> we don't know the future, but God does. And God will not leave us. God will not forsake us. We're in his eternal care. But what about the meantime? What, is, what does God expect out of us while well, we're waiting for him to, to come back and accept us and receive us into his care? Well, God wants us to trust him and to wait confidently for his unfolding of the plan. And sometimes we forget that, don't we? We forget that he is in charge, and we think we should take, take charge, and we think we can do better than he could. We forget who we are. We forget whose we are. And we forget that in the midst of the turmoil of life, we can never be defeated because we're connected to the victorious one. Life and death cannot defeat our God, and life and death cannot defeat those who are joined to him. And so when all these hard things of life happen, when everything seems to be falling apart on us, when everything seems to be going the wrong way, we can lift up our heads and we can rejoice. Because Jesus, our salvation, Jesus, our son of righteousness, is there. And he will light the way in our darkness. We need to be encouraged by the light of Jesus. We need to be encouraged by others who will hold the Christ light for us. When our heads are too mixed up to see the presence of Jesus or when our hearts are so distressed that we, we can't feel his love or, or when our hands are, 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 are too shaky to hold him for ourselves. At that time, we need a person a person to speak for Jesus and be there with the ministry of presence, Jesus' presence, to hold the Christ light of faith for us, to speak words of God's love and care for us, to hold our hands and pray with us. Brother, let me be your servant. 
Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I might have the grace to let you be my servant too. We are pilgrims on a journey, fellow travelers on the road. We're here to help each other walk the mile and bear the load. I will hold the Christ light for you in the night time of your fear. I will hold my hand out to you, speak the peace you long to hear. And that's what each of you as God's people here at Grace Camrose can do. You can go into people's homes, turn off all the lights, and hold the light of Christ for them, and pray with them, and bring Christ's love to your brothers and sisters. Pray for them, pray with them. Even in the midst of turmoil, and especially in the midst of turmoil. Down through the ages, there have been a lot of frightening times. History is riddled with the remains of fallen dominions and empires from Alexander the Great to Adolf Hitler, from the Ottoman Empire to the British Empire, from Genghis Khan to the Shah of Iran from the Tower of Babel to the Berlin Wall. Kingdoms have come and gone, but through it all, the church has survived. The people of God have survived. Why? Because the people of God have disconnected themselves from earthly leaders and connected themselves to the one who is eternal, Jesus Christ, the Lord. When all these terrible things happen in life, says Jesus, when others are fainting and falling and crying and dying, lift up your heads and rejoice because your Savior is near. Connect to him, your Savior, even in the midst of turmoil, especially in the midst of turmoil. God is your refuge and strength. Don't forget that and don't leave him out of your life. The people of God will survive only as they connect with the Lord who survived. The Lord who is the only constant in this changing world of chaos. If you can't sense the warmth and the power and the presence of Jesus, maybe there's too many lights shining in your life, obscuring the light of God's promise. Turn off the earthly lights. Stand alone with Jesus, with Jesus in the darkness. And let the light of his righteousness illumine your world, your world. Is 
a strong and mighty fortress. Raise your voice now. No love is greater. Who can stand against us if our God is for us? Even when we stumble, even when we fall, even when we turn back, still your love is sure. You with a never-ending grace. Sing with joy now, our God is for us. The Father's love is a strong and mighty fortress. Raise your voice now, no love is greater. Who can stand against us if our God is for us? If I go.